Welcome to another episode of Transform Yourself. I'm going to do a little different opening this time because I'm kind of, quite frankly, I just don't want to do the opening that I always do. So <laughs> I'm going to okay, call go off. Audible. Yeah, I'm going off rails. And you guys know who we are at this point, most of our listeners. I'm the Calorie Deficit Queen. My husband is on this podcast with me because he has also lost... Um, a good 70 plus pounds. We we something like that. Yeah, something like that. We're we're around 130 collective pounds lost between the two of us. Uh, and we've kept it off for we did a little calculation recently, almost 3 years. And I'm pretty proud of that uh, because uh, the before us or for sure, I can speak for myself, the before me was a chronic yo-yo dieter and you might resonate with that. Uh, so if that's you and you're looking for fat loss to be a forever thing, Hit me up. I'm at thecaloriedeficitqueen.com. Uh, so here's our podcast, and this this episode we're gonna do um, a little different. I'm gonna allow, like, my husband is going to lead this one, and it's all about stress. But I I feel like I am for sure somebody who is dealing with chronic stress as well. But I think who that's isn't a, right? I mean, you're right. <laughs> I mean, who's not? <laughs> You're right. Like, I would actually, I'm, I'd question it, but also quite jealous if you have no real stress in your life. Uh, that would be a fabulous place to be, having no stress. I, w- I, I think I go through phase. I think maybe maybe we all do. We go through phases of Absolutely. like massive stress and then phases of low stress. But life is so much better when I have low stress. My sleep is better. My body composition is better. My digestive system is better. Everything. Literally everything is negatively affected by stress. Well, yeah. okay, then let's talk about what stress is. Okay, go for S- it. You know, stress, uh, it's the release of cortisol and adrenaline. It is your flight or flight response, your fight or flight response. Yeah. So your body is literally gearing up to either run away or to fight someone. <laughs> that's that's literally what your body's, that's what you're thinking in your chem- your neurochemicals and everything in your All body. All of my neurons want to fight somebody. They're, they don't want to run. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I think I, can, I think I'm. I'm <laughs> I can unfortunately nine. attest to that. Yeah, <laughs> most of my neurons are like, "All right, let's get in a fight. Let's, let's go. go. Let's, let's go." go. It, they're pumping their muscles up. Their my neurons are like, "Let's go. Let's let's fight this out." Yep. So so it literally, <laughs> when you pump your body up full of that stuff, your blood pressure goes up, your heart rate goes up, your muscles get tense. All of those things, like you're getting ready to. Take swift action one way or the other. Yeah. So like it, you're eliciting a physical response as a, as a, as you're eliciting a physical response to a stimulus. So, you know, what, what does that do chronically? You're the dude or the dudette who is chronically stressed. Well, that's when you de- you can start to develop anxiety disorders. You can develop hypertension. Um, that's high blood pressure. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, in depression. And then, you know, to cope with it, you know, I think a lot of people, that's when they turn to drugs and turn to alcohol and turn into pornography and turn into all How about food? They turn to food. Absolutely. How about that? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I guess I'm burying the lead of kind of like the whole point of this thing. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So many of my listeners are so many of my clients. They, they have an emotional eating pattern. And it's their, it's how they cope. Yeah. I think yeah. every, well, everyone copes in certain ways. Um, I, a lot of people cope with food. A lot of people cope with alcohol or with weed or with but the difference can i can i say something here (laughs) the difference is i know you can you can live your life alcohol free you can you can remove if alcohol is your crutch you can remove alcohol from your house absolutely and still be able to live a full amazing life but you can't remove food from your house yeah Uh, that's so yeah because it's funny um theo (laughs) vaughn The The dude from the real world. So he's got a very popular podcast and he talks because he had a, uh, a drug addiction, a cocaine addiction because of the stress of being a young celebrity or whatever. And he talks about like how much, and then they also kind of in the conversation made the parallel to people being addicted to food. But the difference that that is, man, that's a harder, that's a really difficult addiction to deal with. Right. Because it's not like every morning at eight o'clock you have to do a bump of Coke. (laughs) 
Like, but you have <laughs> right. to eat every day. So right. But you can only do just a little bit of Coke. It's like a Coke deficit. Uh, you have to be in a Coke deficit, ex- people. Exactly. And that, that was, <laughs> yes, you're exactly hitting the point he was trying to make. Right. Is, it's the only thing that you is it. I don't want to say I say drug very very loosely here, but it's like your drug if you're in that situation. Yes, that you have to continue taking for the rest of your life, or you will die. Right. So yeah. So, so learning food how to addiction do it, is is hard. Yes, and so I think that's also why you lean into the mind shift part of your program so much, and also I think that's why the program is so successful is because I don't think a lot of people talk about the mindset change because that's really the hard part is you have to change the way you look at food and life really absolutely to to be successful long term because anyone you know anyone can short term change what they eat and how they exercise but if you don't change the way you're thinking your thoughts i i'm i've said it before your thoughts create your feelings, your feelings create your actions, your actions create your results. So therefore your thoughts create your results and you have to change your thoughts in order to change your results. And that is the mind shift piece of form yeah. Fit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so this has been kind of a topic that's bubbled up in my life personally lately. Like stress has been overwhelming at times. Like that has been something I've personally struggled with. Yes. So that's, that's kind of why I want to take the lead in this. Um, but also, you know, kind of did a little research on like, Hey, how can you mitigate this? And here we go with five tips, (laughs) five (laughs) tips, five tips that to help you mitigate stress. Okay, let's go. I need, I mean, I feel like I need these tips as well because I am a stressed out person many, many days of the, (laughs) of the month, but my stress I think comes from different places than your stress, but that's okay. We all have, it's all, all of our listeners can probably relate to their own level of stress yes. coming from their own source. Yeah. So go for it. I'd love to hear it. What's number one? Number one, get outside. Okay. You know that 50% of Americans live in a city and that number is grow is it's rapidly growing actually. Okay. Uh, and I think in the next 10 to 15 years, they expect 70% of Americans to live in a city. Okay. And they have done studies that have shown that if you live in an urban environment, you have a higher rate of mental distress, mental disorders, mental problems, stress, obviously being probably the root of a lot of those issues. Okay. So getting out uh, 90 minutes is like, seems to be like the Goldilocks zone. 90 minutes of outside time. Yes. Ooh. Walking. And I know, and I, I think and guilty. I, I'm not, I don't do that. It's well, that's, that's very difficult, but I <laughs> think is. start somewhere, get outside, just look at something besides concrete, look at something besides, um, you know, the, the sheetrock inside your house. Yeah. Now I would argue that for me, I don't get outside 90 minutes a day. Um, I would argue that I would probably have to start somewhere around 15 to 30 minutes a day and start there. Yeah. And And, and, and just like any other habit, I would have to start small and, and build my way up. But I really honestly think even just getting 10 minutes of sunshine is probably huge for your mental health. Yeah. And I would say that, that 90 minutes is probably, it's, That was what they used in a study. So obviously in a very controlled, prescriptive way. Okay. um, I would agree with you that get outside and do something will make you feel better than nothing. Because 90 minutes is a stretch. That is a difficult, that is a difficult thing to do. Yes. Especially if you live in a city, (laughs) like that's. Even just getting out and walking around. Right. For Especially for those people who work in an office, have a desk job, you know, they're there all day long. Um, yeah, that that might prove hard. But having a 10 minute outside walk during your lunch might make a huge difference yeah. in your stress level. Yeah. yeah. I used to work with a guy that he had a timer on his watch or whatever on his phone that would go off every hour to prompt him to go basically do a lap out in our warehouse. I love so, it. So he would walk out to the back and, you know, and it was probably 150, 200 yards total walk, but mm-hmm. it was an opportunity to not like a screen, take a walk. And it was in an open air warehouse. So it wasn't, it was <laughs> technically outside, kind of outside, right? but take a break, walk away, get some fresh air. Okay. Don't just sit and ruminate over your keyboard all day long. Like, or, or your iPhone or whatever. Um, next thing. Number two. Tip number two. Set work boundaries. Huh. <laughs> Do not. 
Uh, so something that I used to do, a previ- yeah. previous version of me, would have work email, Microsoft Teams. I'd have all those things on my phone so I could be reached whenever or I could respond whenever. Well, man, I really realized that adds a lot of stress. If you get a message or an email at 9 o'clock at night, you feel like an urge to respond to it. Yep. So I no longer do that. I don't put any of that crap on my personal phone. If I need, if I have a job where I need to be contacted, I will have a dedicated phone yeah. for that. Um, and, I, and I think for most people, unless you're a doctor or a first responder of some type, disconnect. You need, yeah. to, you need to have disconnect times. You need so to have a schedule. So what do you do if you are an online influencer <laughs> and you have many different means of which people can contact you? Let's say, for example, you have, I don't know, 400,000 followers on TikTok and Instagram. Then they people can message you through both Instagram and TikTok and ask you questions. Uh, People can ask questions and comments. Um, Then there's also two separate emails of which I get asked questions. Then there's also Facebook people who ask me questions. Oh, and then I have my own app of which people ask me questions. And then, oh, wait, there's also DMs. So the amount of questions I have to respond to daily is overwhelming. And that's not my full time gig that's just part of my you, gig so who are you talking about i'm i'm who am i talking about oh i don't know <clears throat> anyways so what would you suggest to that person what the how only do, thing how I do could, i turn that off well first off if i had a suggestion for that person <laughs> go ahead i'm listening uh, I, I would just I'm say listening. um you just need to set some sort of hours i i don't know what else to say okay because, and I, I understand what you're saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down. This wasn't meant to be like directed at you. <laughs> I know. But I, I know. But, but I, I see, know. I understand what you're saying. So I, know, I have a, because I there's have a, lot a hard time with this you're, setting you're, boundaries. You're, you're, you're sending do. messages l- it, almost every waking moment of the day. Yes, that you're, is you're, correct. You're if on your phone doing something. I for can work. tell everybody here that when we go anywhere in our vehicle, together you are the driver because I spend even if we're going five minutes down the road I'm going to spend that five minutes in my phone answering questions because I can get work done while he's driving and so every crack of time minute I'm going to try to use it to my benefit to be able to get work done so that I don't have to do it later and I do try to Take time out to play dance party with our kids. We've been doing that for the last couple of days. It was, it's good times. Um, also a good way to get in movement, but that's another podcast. Uh, but yes, work, setting work boundaries is something I need to do in order to lower my stress. So I yeah, am, it's it's difficult, and I understand. Like you have your um, you're I'm, not a solopreneur. I'm working on getting an assistant. Yes, so I haven't yet. Uh, dove, delve into, dove. What what word do I use? I don't even know. Well, I don't know what the next dived thing. into, delve into, dove into. I don't I don't know what to use in that. Everyone manner. knows what you mean. I have not yet gotten a full time assistant, but I am working on that. Um, I have a hire that I am slowly giving work to that will hopefully ramp up. And I'm talking about you, April. Um, and uh. Take Help. some of the take some of the load off my plate so that I can have more boundaries and spend more time with my family. Yeah, because it's it, and I don't think you are unique in the sense that you're getting bombarded with stuff Agreed. all throughout the day, and you are. Agreed. I can't even imagine. Obliged. There's so many jobs that yeah. are probably exactly like that, yeah. where you're getting bombarded and all I know. the time. And it's and and I, and I get it. And teachers, <clears throat> people I'm probably, talking to you, teachers, you people in education. I mean, I did the same thing in education. W- what would I do on the weekends? I would come home and I would grade papers all weekend long, or send emails to students and parents, or mm-hmm. do all of that extra work. So yeah, people in education, you you too, y'all need to set boundaries as well. Or try. I was the teacher who would get there super early in the morning, and sometimes I would be last to leave. Um, I tried to get it all done at school. 
as best I could. But yeah, setting boundaries at school is is hard to do when you have a ton of students and, and parents. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think it's gotten worse for the general population as technology has advanced. And it, I know it's going kind of backwards, but working from home is a lot more prevalent than it was five years ago, even. Right. Um, so there's been a big creep into your personal life. So yeah, trying, trying to set that boundary. Okay. Note to in, self in a nutshell, get outside, set boundaries. Okay. I've got two things on my list. Okay. Number three. <laughs> yeah. Number three, exercise. Okay. Uh, I, I think do that's, that one. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, they've done some studies showing that strength training and yoga um, have shown out of all of like the exercise group they looked at, I think it was strength training, yoga, cardio, jo- it was jogging and walking. Okay. And they showed that strength training and yoga display, um, showed the most improvement in people's overall mental guess, health, mental health. Yeah. I mean, okay. without getting into the weeds and also I'm not looking at the study, I'm just kind of going off the top of my head a little bit. Um, they, those showed the greatest amount of, I guess, bang for your buck, if you will. Okay. Um, there have also been studies that have shown that, regular exercise and getting sun, like doing all the things we're kind of talking about can have similar effects to some types of medications that you can take. Nice. So obviously I'm not a doctor. Talk to your doctor about this, but I think it cannot hurt if you're struggling to get some sun and get some fresh air and exercise more, particularly strength train. Okay. I know for me, like today, like this past week has been a better, I've been, I've been under a lot of stress lately. This morning, on a Saturday, I got up and I went in the garage and I exercised, and I feel like a million bucks. And I so, laid in bed and drank coffee, and I heard him in the garage grunting <laughs> as he was exercising. And I was thinking to myself, I should probably be out there exercising, but I was really enjoying my coffee. Yeah, yeah. I, I personally, it you know, for me, um, lifting heavy things make bad feeling go away. That, that, <laughs> that's how I feel. Okay. Um, and I, I, mean, always, nobody, I always forget that. I always forget. I feel like I forget that every day. Nobody ever regrets getting in a good exercise session, whether whatever it is, no matter if it's a jogging or walking or strength training or yoga or whatever it is. Like sometimes you don't want to do it, but then you do it and you don't ever regret doing it. Absolutely you usually, not. I mean, just, I mean, alone, the serotonin you, you get from it. And yes. then, yeah, uh, it's, I, I think it's a, it, I think if people in large started doing that it doesn't have to be insane it can be it body can be weight. 20 minutes it could be calisthenics it can be very very minimal setups yeah. and have massive rewards for not much input and not much money to do it okay. or zero money okay i'm feeling better now i've i checked one off the three the list of three so far i need to work on the the getting outside and setting boundaries all right, okay next, i got the next one exercise right. i got this one okay the next two aren't looking so good for you i'm gonna no? be on okay, okay. well what? i don't know what are they I, uh, the next one is journal. I journal. You don't know that I journal, though, I don't think. Do you journal? I have. Yes, I do. Like today. You know those. Okay. Do you know those? Uh, I did yesterday. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. You know those little books I carry around? The pink one, the black yeah. and white stripe one. That's a journal? What What would you call it? I mean, you write down work stuff in it. I do write down work stuff <laughs> Recipe. in it, but I also write down journaling thoughts in it as well. Okay. I have, yeah. Okay, well, okay, well, I'm sorry, I take that back. <laughs> Clearly, I don't go through your things. Um, I didn't know. But that's something I have, I do very irregularly, but I do know that w- when I do it, I feel like it helps get out of my brain and onto paper, and I can see it better, and I can understand it better, and I can digest how I feel better than just trying to ruminate it in my head. And... For like, you know, like the three other guys that might listen to this. Yeah, it sounds kind of dumb. It does. <laughs> it does. It sounds kind of dumb. But it helps. Any it successful, help. successful person really does journal. Well, and also, I mean, obviously, I'm taking this to like a weird, maybe kind of like romantic way. But if you like going back into history, generals in every like significant person, like all of the uh, all the books about stoicism were real like uh from from Marcus Aurelius those weren't books he wrote those were those, journals those were journals he wrote to himself so like you're seeing this dude's like inner monologue and thoughts that now we look back as oh my god this is like kind of like the start of western civilization and philosophy and you go back to civil war generals and presidents they all journaled and wrote about 
what was going on. It's a fantastic yep. record of not just where you've been, but then also kind of helps you digest things. Absolutely. So I think it is an unsung, I think it's something that we have forgotten in modern era, that it is a very, very important, effective thing we can do to kind of help process our emotions. Yeah. I, I use the journaling app that comes on iPhones now. Yeah. And I really like it. Do you? I do. Okay. Like I haven't, I haven't got I've, into well, that. Well, I've, I've to become. The iPhone app I know. I've, part I've, of it. I I write so infrequently now. So now if I have to write more than a sentence, my hand cramps up. <laughs> so, Awful. So I know Awful. it is. Awful. I know. Um. So I actually, to many, many, many of my clients, suggest journaling. I suggest, and and it can be done in so many different ways. It something as simple as using a three win strategy in journaling. I ask my clients, get a journal. I show them mine on, you know, when we're in our zoom, cause I always have mine with me. Um, and I say, keep this by your bed at night and I want you to pick it up and I want you to write three wins on Monday night that you are going to predetermine that you're going to have on Tuesday. And it could be, you know, I'm going to drink 60 ounces of water. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to, uh, drink water before I drink my coffee. That'll be number two. Uh, number three, I'm going to go to bed by 9.30. Lights out by 9.30. So you could three, anything. It could be eating in a calorie deficit. It could be anything. I'm going to eat two servings of fruits and two servings of vegetables tomorrow. That could be one of your wins. So all you're going to do is just name three, predetermined three wins you would have the next day. Write it down in your journal and you are much more likely to do those things the next day if you predetermine them the day before. And then Tuesday, you check them off. You look at them, you look at your journal, you write down if, you know, if you did not accomplish one of them, you write down maybe why that didn't happen. Um, So that's one method I have clients use when journaling. Another method I might have clients use is kind of a behavior assessment tool. Uh, If clients find themselves in emotional eating scenarios, we work our way backwards to the trigger, which caused the emotional eating barrier. So because all emotional eating is created by a trigger. And if we can, and it's just a chain of events, if we can break the link at the beginning, that trigger, then we can likely break the link at the end, which is the result of emotional eating. So but that's, that's, it's a whole nother, I, I'll have to talk about Sorry, behavior I, assessment. I kind of went on a tangent there. That about was, I blacked, I blacked out for it. <laughs> I have no idea what you just so, said. So, so I'm just showing examples or telling examples, I guess, of different journaling methods of which I have my clients use in order to assess where they're at and how they're going to get to their goal. So the three win method, the behavior assessment, um, uh, journaling, uh, different kinds of mindful eating that they've done. There's all kinds of methods and strategies that I have that I use with my one-on-one clients. This is something that I don't necessarily do. I don't do this in, in my well, group. Why coaching. don't we, let's, I do let's this table that so. a little bit. Cause I feel like that could be a whole other pod. Yeah. I do this more so in my one-on-one coaching. Uh, if you're interested, feel free to join me at the calorie deficit queen.com. Hit me up. Um, <laughs> All right. Under coaching. Go ahead. Number, okay. Where are we at? Number number five. Number numero, five. Numero cinco. Sleep. Oh, I'm not good at that <laughs> one either. Man. I, I don't. I, I I've mean, only I, checked I off two of these. I understand the importance of sleep, but I guess I have a little bit of FOMO or whatever in life where I'm like, I don't want to go to bed. Like, there's stuff I want to do. Like, yes. that's how I feel. Like, oh, I haven't watched this movie yet. I don't want to go to bed with my wife at 930. Yeah. I, I, here's the problem. I try to go to bed at 9 30 10 I am guilty totally guilty of looking at my phone or looking at a screen or having my laptop in bed doing work um and then <laughs> many days I will lights out but then I'll lay there until midnight one in the morning just laying there in my head just like the rest of you women I know I know how it goes y'all know how it goes you lay there and you're thinking about all the millions of things and the things that are bothering you and the things on your to-do list. Um, there is a whole nother journaling method, by the way, if that is you, if I'm describing you and I'm by the way, also describing myself here, if you're the person that lays in bed and thinks about 
the millions of things you have to do the next day. And if you're going to remember to do it and then you need to do a five minute brain dump and get out a physical journal, write it down, just brain dump for five minutes, all the things you have to do the next day, create that list, close your book. Now that thought lives inside your book. You don't have to keep it in your brain and hold on to it there. You're going to place it inside your book, close your book, put it inside your nightstand and rest knowing that it's going to be there in the morning. That's what I do. All for of your work. thoughts. Yeah. I do that for work. If I've got a lot going on, like, like the last 30 minutes of my every day for work, um, last 30 minutes or an hour, um, what I'll do is kind of like a brain dump of like, okay, this is everything I've got going on. And I'll kind of like mentally just write down like everything I want to do tomorrow and like all the kind of like projects I'm working on and kind of rank them. This is what I want to do first because first thing in the morning, get the most energy. Let's do the hardest task first thing. Yeah. Afternoon is for the, the drone work is what I think for me. And then wrap it up with planning for the next day or just kind of like getting, getting my plate ready for the that's next good. day. That's good. I like it. Yeah, I mean, I do brain dumps also, but I usually do them in the morning. That's funny. I do, I do my brain dump in the morning of like, what am I going to accomplish today? And I write them down in my journal that I kind of carry around with me everywhere. So the way I look at it is I would rather spend all of my early energy task oriented getting all that stuff getting things done when i have yeah. the most yeah. bandwidth to the most energy and it's you know i start about 7 30 in the morning i don't get bothered very much at 7 30 in the morning That's so true. i can get a lot done before the world is awake really yeah and i guess there's no right or wrong way to do it no um, i think whatever works we kind of moved back to journaling we were on sleep weren't we yeah so we sleep so sleep yeah so sleep is important it, uh, it, here's I mean, the thing. For, for a million metabolic processes, and they've even done studies that people who are underslept, when they give them an MRI, the parts of the brain that process anxiety are just like lit up like Christmas trees. Ooh, me. I think, <laughs> I mean, for me too, for everybody. Yeah. Uh, I um, have our neighbors who are just the kindest people in the world. They're so nice. Um, just gifted me and Tyler a weighted blanket for our bed and I love it it is so great this weighted blanket feels amazing to sleep under I'm I'm trying to improve my sleep habits uh so the next thing on my list and I know it's been on my list for quite some time is blackout curtains I'm just I just have a hard time pulling the plug on which one I want to buy off Amazon so I I just need to pull the plug though and buy some off Amazon get some blackout curtains get our room nice and dark um, we're also working on trying to improve the AC conditions because our house gets cold except for our bedroom. It's the only room in the house that's hot and I cannot sleep hot. I'm y'all. I mean, it's like you 10 ladies, degrees come warmer. on. We're all in perimenopause. I know y'all are too, or you're in menopause or you're postmenopausal. So yeah, I get hot at night. So would I'm you want a chili to, pad? Uh, a chili pad is that one? Is that like a blanket you sleep on on it's, top of and it, it cools you? Yes, it's basically it's like a. But isn't it hooked up to a machine underneath yeah. your bed and then the machine makes noise? Yes. Yes. I so that noise the, would keep me away. Well, and I think there are. I think there's some newer, maybe mm -hmm. di maybe not that brand that I think are quieter. But yeah, it's just something to think about. Maybe. Um, I mean, I I think blackout I, curtains is really should be our number one. I I talk about it all the time and. I can't pull the plug on getting one. I'm, I have, I don't know what my problem is with pulling the plug on buying them. That's it. We need to do it this weekend. We're buying some. Okay. Sounds good. I'm making a statement, a bold statement here. Let's follow up on that and see if I did. Okay. Let's, <laughs> um, let's do it. Cause okay. if that, cause if, then if that doesn't make a drastic difference, then we're heading down the road of a mini split, <laughs> <laughs> which that will freeze us out of the room. So that I will accomplish it. it but it. that's a, Let's that's make a, our bedroom 65 degrees, dark can, as a cave and a weighted blanket. And I want to sleep like I am an infant. <laughs> well, that, the, okay. These are all things that can happen. Let's do it. All so, right. The, that's it. So that's the five things, get five outside. Things. First podcast produced by yours truly. Yeah. Get outside, set work boundaries, exercise, journal, and sleep. Yeah. And there was a lot of other ones because I basically, uh, you Picked. know, through, I mean, I looked through a list on in an article and, and just was like, what's what's the, the highlights here? Yeah. And I mean, there was other ones, but these seem to be the, the, the ones that are the most obvious, the ones that most people could probably do 
for free or very, very inexpensively and have the best bang for your buck. Yeah. I think you gave me some great ideas for some of our next podcasts. I could talk about the emotional eating and the triggers and how to work backwards to get to your trigger and how to know if it's physical versus emotional hunger, all of those things. Yeah. So yeah, future podcasts. That's what we're, I'm going to, I'm going to write that one down. There we go. Good pod today, right? Fantastic. All right, wrap us up. All right. So thank you for joining us on another episode of Transform Yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, share the love. And until next time, keep shining, keep smiling, and keep transforming yourself. Adios. Adios.